Hey there, welcome to month two of our new 2019 album club. We are getting t-shirts, the design is actually all done. Still waiting on, on getting that uploaded and, and made. But the design, we're getting shirts. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be the slogan for, for, for the whole year. Welcome to the Album Club. We're getting shirts! As I explained in my previous video, the month of January I have been just not doing all that well uh, productivity-wise, so I only had time genuinely to listen to three albums in depth, enough depth to make a whole video about. So this month we're going to be talking about three albums. Number one is I Hope You Don't Mind Me Writing by Lucy Spragan. The second is On Hold by Fen Lily. And finally, Feel Something by the band Movements. So first off, Lucy Spragan's album I Hope You Don't Mind Me Writing. This came out two years ago, the 27th of January 2017, and is 42 minutes long. I guess you just describe it as like pop folk or just acoustic pop. It's not all acoustic, but Lucy's music is more sort of natural sounding pop. I, I, I don't, it's very hard to put Lucy in a box, just as a musician, as a person. Uh, I guess I should state here uh, for clarity, because I think it's only fair, Lucy is my friend. Uh, I have known her for a couple of years. We've met a few times and we've, we talk, uh, a fair bit. I just, I wanted to make that clear um, in case anyone thought that would influence, you know, what I'm going to say about this album. I am going to say that I'm not going to give this album a rating out of 10 because I think with the fact that I know her personally, it's, it, it would just be a bit weird. So I am going to talk about the album, but I'm not gonna, not going to rate it. I hope that makes sense. Now, saying that I'm her friend and saying that um, I really, really like her, I have to admit, and this is really bad, this is the first Lucy Spragan album that I have listened to in full. And that's that's just complete honesty, right? I guess, like, naturally, it isn't the music that I, I tend to usually um, surround myself with. I don't know how I would properly word that. My words aren't really coming out all that well. But the whole point of our album club is that you guys suggest albums to me that I wouldn't perhaps necessarily listen to uh, out of choice. So loads of you guys actually recommended this album and I'm so, so, so glad you did because I love it. I absolutely love it. It is just... It's so well written. Lucy has such a talent for writing and that is not the friend in me saying that. That is me listening to this album going, oh my god, these songs are just, they're so well written. The album is so well produced as well and I found, uh, even on first listen, so many songs stuck out to me and I've listened to the album in full, I think like three or four times now uh, over the last month or so and the same songs just keep punching me in the gut every single time. I would say that that there isn't like a bad song or a filler song on the album, just that there are certain songs that sit uh, more prominently with me than others. But genuinely, the whole album is so, so easy to listen to. And if you've got a long drive, it genuinely is like um, long drive, top down, just beautiful, beautiful music to listen to. I don't like putting people in the whole like driving music box, but I think especially like on, on like a lazy day, if you're like with friends and you know, like, like a lazy Sunday, it's not like really laid back music, but when you're just in a good mood or you need to maintain a good mood, like when you're driving because it's stressful, um, this type of music that Lucy's making, it just, it lifts your spirits and it keeps your spirits there for the whole time. My favourite songs on the album are Loaded Gun, which is, I would say one of the most upbeat songs on the album. Uh, the chorus is just so, so good. Um, it just really, really gets you going. I think it's fantastic. Uh, track three, Grown Up. Oh, it's, it's so, oh, I think Grown Up might be my favourite, if I'm completely honest with you. I don't know how to describe it as a song, it's just the lyrics are perfect and the chorus, it just, oh, I don't know, I just really connect with that one. And, uh, the song Dear You, which is track five, it's just really heartbreaking. It tells a really, really sad story and it it, uh, it also brings uh, the, I don't know how to put it, I'm not going to say rapping because <laughs> it's not the right word to use, but um, Lucy uses quite a bit of spoken word uh, as well as singing and this song really, really highlights her skill of being able to write um, songs. <laughs> songs. As in like in the form in which she narrates 
uh, rather than like melodically telling a tale, she's like speaking it. Um, it's 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 heartbreaking. Dear You is is a very very strong track. And also, if you haven't already heard the song that I it popped up on my Facebook so many times over the last year, and I'd already heard it. Freddo's Aunt Ten P. If you are also twenty seven, <laughs> I feel like between the ages of, like I don't know like twenty seven and like early thirties, like. This song, it's just like, it, oh god, like it just describes your, like our childhoods growing up, only having four channels on the TV, and like if if The Simpsons wasn't on, you were probably out with your friends. It was just like little things. I'm just like, that's me. I would say those are my favourite songs. Um, I I I will I will be completely open. I I think some songs towards the end of the album, they sort of they. To me, they're not as, as as strong, and I didn't connect with them as much. Um, but it might be because, like, by the first half of the album, I'm just like so emotionally overwhelmed. I'm just like, <laughs> just I can't take any more in. But uh, I I highly highly urge you to put this album on. Um, and just listen all the way through. You won't have to force yourself to listen to it. You really, really won't. Some of the albums you guys have recommended, like I've had to sit there and make sure that I'm not just like clicking on a YouTube video and trying to do something else, you know. But this one, I did not have to try whatsoever to to listen to this album in full. It's wonderful. Lucy, you did an amazing job. Again, I feel weird giving a number out of 10 for someone that I know personally, uh, so I won't. But trust me when I say, when you guys, because I hope you choose to listen to every album that I recommend for this club. That's kind of what we do. Um, but if if you're gonna, if you're going to choose one out of the three this month, I urge you to listen to Lucy's. Um, I think it's just wonderful, wonderful writing. So the second album. So this is this is an interesting one for me. This is On Hold by Fen Lily. Now, uh, Fen Lily, I think she she came into prominence like. Prominence, pro you know, she she became like quite well known like last year. I think this album came out last year. In fact, I'm supposed to be telling you. So the album came out April of last year, and it's 37 minutes long. I remember like reading on social media people just talking about Fen Lily, Fen Lily, Fen Lily, like loads and loads and loads. Um, and I did give a couple of her songs a listen during that time. As a blanket disclaimer, because I think it's very important for me to say this, uh, the type of music that Fen Lily makes and writes is not music that I usually listen to. So when I talk about these songs, please bear that in mind. I don't want you thinking, oh, well, she's not making that sound like a great album. Um, I'm not gonna bother listening to it. I urge you to listen to it because loads and loads of people love this type of music. But for me, uh, Fen Lily is very, very laid back, but very sorrowful. And I do find a lot of her songs are, it's, ah, oh, I don't want to be rude and say like a bit of a downer, but that's literally what it is. It is slow, sad music. And I know a lot of people use like slow, sad music uh, when, them, when they themselves are feeling sad, you know. For some reason we do that, right? We listen to sad music when we're sad. I guess we want to feel validated, I don't know. But um, I, I just didn't really gel with this album, if I'm completely honest with you. There were a few songs that, that I thought were quite good. Uh, Car Park was good. I, this is the problem. I can't sit here and say what I loved about each of the songs. I did find that most of them just sounded exactly the same. And that's that's just my biased opinion because of the type of music, I guess. But um, it, it is hard for me to distinguish uh, one song from the others. But, you know, that's, again, I think that's more personal. That's on me more than on this really successful songwriter. But Car Park is a song that I, I know I enjoyed. The Hand You Deal, which I think was, I'm pretty sure that was a single, uh, one that I'd previously listened to anyway. On Hold is another great song. And finally, Top to Toe, which is my personal favorite. Um, every time I had this album on in the background, and like I said, the songs kind of flow into each other in my opinion, and there's not really a lot going on dynamically, and it's kind of hard to know where you are. Every single time that Top to Toe has come on, um, without realizing it, like it catches my attention and I have to click back on Spotify to be like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's that one. <laughs> like, so that's definitely, to me, I think, I think that's the standout song. But overall, it's very hard to give a rating on this album because it just isn't something that caught my attention. I would feel very rude giving this a low score 
if it's just based on the fact that it isn't really my type of music, but is it something that I would choose to listen to again um, after this video is made? No, not personally. Um, I would have to give this album like a four or five out of 10, but that's, that's not because she can't write songs, that's not because the songs are bad, it's just for me, it didn't really do much, but I urge you guys to give it a go and see if it's your type of music. I'm sure that there will be so many of you who find it really raw and personal, but for me, it just, it just didn't really work that well for me. And finally, the album Feel Something by Movements. Now, um, let's, let's get the details up first, because I've got quite a bit to say about this album. This came out late 2017 and it's 43 minutes long. This album frustrated the living daylights out of me if I'm honest, because I went into it, listened to track one, thinking, oh, actually, this is pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quite enjoy this. Track one is, is by, by far one of the best songs on the album. Um, I think the main thing that frustrates me about this album, it is like, I wouldn't even call it pop punk. I guess you'd just call it like alternative pop rock. I don't, I really don't know what to call it. But say that we're gonna call it like mature pop punk or something, I am, my problem is I'm very, very specific about what I like, what components of this type of genre that I really like. I like layered BVs, I like gang vocals, I like um, a different guitar tone, I like textures, of which this album has none, by the way. And the songwriting itself, whilst I, I don't think is that genius in my opinion, anyway, and I don't wanna trash any albums in this club, I don't think it's trash, but, I really feel that this whole album had a lot more potential. I think the way it was produced was a mistake. And that's, a lot of people suggested this album to me, so I'm sure that opinion is not shared by many of you, but if this is their chosen style and how they wish to um, proceed, you know, fair game, whatever, but I think this album, uh, if it was produced differently and produced the way that I like it, I would have enjoyed it a lot more, I think. My main issue with it was it lacks textures, it lacks any sort of, basically all you hear is the band. And some people really, really love that, but you can hear that there's not layered guitar and the vocals, there's there's just nothing gives the chorus any lift whatsoever. You've got like barely any, if any at all, like barely any harmonies, or barely any BVs. There's just, you know, I just feel like it could have had a much cleaner, uh, more, I don't know, like, recent modern production than it had. And whilst, like I said, I, I don't think, you know, the album was genius but scuppered by production, I do think that the songs themselves, like the writing style of them, the verses, the choruses, they would have sounded better if they were accompanied by better production. Um, that said, no verses stood out to me on this album really. Um, no choruses stood out to me on this album besides like uh, track one. Track one, uh, which is called Full Circle, was really good and that did really frustrate me because I was like, I'm gonna love this album. Then it was like, oh, no, 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 this is crap now. Literally the, the, the second track I was like, I want to skip this, uh, which is really sad because Whilst with the Fen Lily album, I'm saying, you know, I don't want to judge it too harshly because I know it's not the type of music I listen to anyway. This could have been good, like, oh, I'm not gonna say that, that's really rude, like, this could have been good, but like, I don't know, like, it's, it's so close to what I do really enjoy and it just missed the mark for me, production-wise, writing-wise. So the songs that I, I liked the most, I'm not even gonna say liked, really, if I'm completely honest. Full Circle, track one, Day Lily, which is track four. That's like one of the slower ones on the album and that really could have benefited from some textures. Um, and it has a really, really weird ending, um, but it is a stronger moment on the album for me. And also the song, I think it's called Deep Red, simply because the bass tone of the whole album really shines. Uh, that is one thing I will give the uh, producer credit for, or e even the bassist himself, don't be rude, Emma. Um, I will give credit, the bass tone is nice, like genuinely really nice, but um, that's really all I can say about this album, and I have to give it a 3 out of 10 for me personally. I'm sorry to everyone that recommended this to me, who really, really loved it, but it's just, I couldn't emotionally connect to any of the songs whatsoever because just nothing, nothing was shining through. I don't think it was produced right. I think, 
I think this band has potential. I think, you know, that sounds really patronizing. It's not like I'm, you know, a freaking genius, but it's just always frustrating when you hear an album, you're just like, why didn't you do that? Like that could have made it so much better and you didn't do it. You know, um, this is just my personal take on it. It just frustrated me a lot. But again, like with the others, please give it a listen give it a go, and if I'm wrong in your opinion, please tell me so. Like, I wanna have this discussion in the comments below. Um, did you like this album? Did you not like this album? What did you like? What didn't you like? Blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about it. That's what Album Club is all for, right? So that's it for this month. Um, please let me know in the comments below what albums I should be adding to my huge, huge playlist that I have compiled. It's currently got like 4,000 songs on it. Um, pressure or what. Let me know your album suggestions in the comments below. Let's have a discussion on all of the albums listed here. And until next time guys, thank you so much for watching. The t-shirts are coming and I shall catch you later!